Hey, everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews, and Eve Levin endorsed by Howard's celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Ghost Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, and makes great gifts 24-7 for family, friends, and loved ones. Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the Mike Widener Show.com. You can also buy me a coffee at the Mike Widener Show app. Buy me a coffee and make sure you give generously today. We're here with a, a terrific duo based out of San Diego, a mother-daughter music team and a multi-genre classically trained uh, musicians with Masters of Arts in Music and working as college music educators and travel around the world. Talk more about that. And of course, uh, we have a wonderful mom who is a music director of the San Diego Jewish Men's Choir, Billboard charting and award-winning and critically acclaimed. And of course, got some great music. We'll talk about that. And her amazing daughter is an up-and-coming artist. She performed with me and the kids and featured soloists on Action uh, Moves People United. And, um, and of course, they're uh, music uh, instructors um, in, in uh, various colleges. We'll talk about that. And this latest release is basically having a dream and integrating from their uh, roots as well. We'll talk about that live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown San Diego. The amazing, multi-talented mother-daughter team of... I had a dream songs of an immigrant, ladies and gentlemen, the multi-talented Ruth Weber and her daughter, Emilia Lopez Yanis. Ladies, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Yes, it's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Well, it's great to have you guys on board as well, too. This is just history in the making with two wonderful ladies just collaborating together, especially a mother-daughter team. I love hearing that. So basically, you guys have been a music team for quite some time and multi-genre classically trained musicians with masters of arts and music and work as um, instructors uh, facil in the faculty and more. You also travel around the world. And uh, Ruth, you're a music director of the San Diego Jewish Choir. And uh, Emilia, you're an up-and-coming artist. You performed with uh, me and the kids and um, also featured soloist on... Um, Action Moves People United, and uh, you also have an album out as well, too, which is called I Had a Dream, Sons of an I Songs of an Immigrant, and also some um, great music as well. We'll talk about that. And before we get into all that, guys, tell us how you first got started. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> we've been collaborating since Amelia was like three years old. Do you, do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Fragments uh, here and there. <laughs> Come on, don't exaggerate. Go ahead. <laughs> when my my daughter was three and my son was eight, we had like a little trio that we uh, we had a. It was called Me and the Kids, and we performed like at community events. And they used to have these border bookstores. We performed some concerts in there. We had a, an album that we sold at that time. And then when my kids got older, like my son wasn't really interested in doing that anymore. So we stopped and we did more classically oriented things and just um, we circled back to the kids stuff a while ago and we've been doing a lot of we had 
two children's release albums, but now we have this special pro project that we're doing just, just like a family labor of love project. Mm -hmm. and, and it does sound like it as well, too. And Ruth, you're music director of the Billboard Charting Group, the San Diego Jewish Men's Choir, which toured nationally, received a lot of critical acclaim and very high praises. And uh, you also were the Coral Ranger director on the soundtrack of the multi award winning film, One Little Finger. And also um, you received your first film nomination in the Music City's uh, Film Awards in 2021 for Best Music for Sustainability. And, um, you, you know, tell us more about your career and uh, basically just, um, just, just how you got started uh, music-wise. Uh, I think I always knew that I wanted to be a musician. When I was little, my mom sat me on the piano bench by her side and we sang and played the piano and I knew I wanted to be doing that all the time. And I did the same with my kids when they were little. We played music games in the car <laughs> while we were traveling. We, we were always singing and singing together. And so I was hoping that they would get bitten by the music bug and they did. So. That was great for me. And now it's just a joy to do projects with them. Mm -hmm. and, and it sounds like it too. You don't need to go to a doctor if you get bit by the music bug. Just keep <laughs> playing until it keeps biting you. And um, right. <laughs> right. And what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you in, into what you're doing for the rest of your career, Ruth? Hmm. I'm not sure if it was one precise moment or a lot of little moments that just just um, pointed me in that direction. That was always like the one thing that I could do that seems like other people weren't doing it. Mm -hmm. and, and who is your, uh, who are your favorite uh, artists, singers, and um, songwriters and musicians growing up? Oh, I listened to a lot of like Joni Mitchell, Judy Collins. Uh, we listened to a lot of folk music when I was growing up. And so I, I always liked that kind of music, but I, we also studied, I studied classical piano. So I was learning, you know, classical piano music. And um, I, I like all genres of music, really. Hmm. That's really interesting. And uh, who are some of your favorite uh, classical artists since we're on that subject? Oh, I love Lang Lang's piano performing right now. He's like my new favorite of <laughs> the piano artists. Mm hmm. And, and, and that sounds amazing as well, too. And um, Emilia, thanks for being so patient as well, too. And of course, you don't have to top your mom on this one that um, <laughs> you, you're basically uh, an up and coming uh, performer. You perform with me and the kids. We talked about it. You featured soloists on Action Moves um, People United. And you're also a um, music uh, faculty uh, teacher and uh, at um, in, in San Diego as well, too. And um, you know, tell us about that and uh, how you got started. Sure. I, well, my mom sort of talked about how we got started because she's, she really encouraged us to be musicians and I feel really lucky now that I know, you know, so many of my colleagues were not encouraged to be musicians. So we were really always being sent to choir and orchestra and every musical thing we could be in, we were in it. So there was no uh, lack of things for us to do <laughs> in the music community and we were really uh, I was sort of I, I really wanted to play the flute in fourth oh. grade when we got to start talking about band instruments and my mom encouraged me to look into other instruments that were less common and popular and I saw that the oboe sat next to the flute and I thought hey that's pretty close I'll try that one <laughs> <laughs> and it really actually as soon as I started taking lessons and playing the oboe it just stuck it was the perfect instrument for me it was it always was very vocal sounding and very expressive and I think because I also always had a love for singing. Mm. I, it sort of just kind of fell into place. And then I went on to study both in my undergrad and then I did my master's and oboe performance and et cetera, et cetera. Oh my gosh, that is so fascinating. And what was that one precise moment for you that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career? That is a really hard question to remember the one moment. I think maybe my 
I remember when I was really young, I think it was only five, I got asked because of my parents to go and sing with an orchestra in Mexico where oh. my dad is from. I got to sing a, a song called Light a Candle for a Christmas concert. And I was only five years old and I was really scared to sing. I mean, with a whole orchestra. And I went out there and I, I did it. And I got off stage and I was, I was always a very shy kid. And then I got off stage and I just knew, actually, I want to do the, more of that. Yeah, that's for me. It's always the, the moment on stage. But I also love being part of something. So anytime I'm part of an orchestra and we're playing a really awesome piece, then I feel like everyone just hones in and it's time to start. Or when you're singing with a choir and everyone is doing the same thing, you're all there for the same reason and purpose. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite part. Um Oh my gosh, that is amazing. I'm sure uh, Ruth, you're very proud of your daughter for that too. And just smiling yeah. and just left yeah. and right. And um, also who are some of your favorite artists, singers, musicians, and um, other songwriters growing up? Oh, um, that's tough. We listen to a lot of different things. My, my mom was always exposing us to different things, but I remember, um, mom, who is it that sang happy Oh, I'm a happy girl. That one. Oh, yes. Gosh. <laughs> um, something with an M, right? Yes. No, country. Yeah. And we listened to that album, I think, for three oh, years wow. straight. Wow. <laughs> I, thought, I felt like <laughs> a, Amelia was my happy girl. So that <laughs> song made me, reminded me of her. Yeah, we listened to a lot. I mean, we... I, I don't have one exact, I mean, I loved Celine Dion as a singer wise. And I think as an oboist, I was really inspired by the oboist, Alan Vogel. Um, he is still living and he, I got the chance to study with him recently for at USC and it was just amazing. I mean, they're both very expressive musicians and I think that's what I was drawn to. Hmm. That is really fascinating. I'm really enjoying this already. You also had some um, other singles released as well, too, plus your brand new one, which is an album. We'll talk about your amazing careers and some of the accomplishments. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by Soundweb Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SonicWeb Studios is the answer. SonicWeb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention to Mike Widener's show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia's Gar, great reviews, and Eve Levin and George by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manilis. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com on over 30 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show at the on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once, Wrinkles, and More. And for great merchandise as well, Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Widener Show.com. And you can buy me a cup of coffee if you like at buy me a cup of coffee at the Mike Weiner show and make sure you do so as well. We're here with a terrific uh, mother daughter um, do all music team and also uh, multi genre classically trained musicians on the Mike Weiner show. Also um, faculty teachers as well too. And before we talk about some of your um, releases that you have, like uh, Kakawanda Bay, the spaceship that fell in my backyard, which won numerous awards. You guys had some awards yourself and uh, Ruth, um, you're also the music director of the billboard charting group, the San Diego Jewish music choir. And, um, you know, tell us about your love for that. And also some of the awards as well too, like, you know, winning in the children's category. I mean, you've got a list that's just so amazing. I think that the children's, 
music holds a special place in our hearts because we began with that kind of music. And uh, for me, when I get to do a performance with Amelia for little kids, it's just so heartwarming to see little kids come up and give you hugs and, <laughs> and to see little kids coming and wanting you to sign their CDs and, and, and learning your songs. I mean, our album Coca-Wanda Bay is about taking care of the planet. Um, uh, the three R's and uh, of ecology, basically. And uh, I just love that we're able to teach sustainability to little kids at a young age, but in a fun way. And um, I, what do you think, Amelia? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you can tell all the awards, you've racked up a lot of awards through that. We, our last album, Coca Wanda Bay, got a Parents' Choice Award, so we were really proud of it. And especially now, Parents' Choice Awards aren't going to exist anymore. So we are glad that oh. we were able to get one um, because there aren't going to be any more, you know, Parents' Choice that in the pandemic that went away. And um, then uh, we won a couple of Hollywood Music and Media Grand Prize Awards in those competitions. And our new album has gotten some film awards, which is a new thing for us because we never, we had never thought of submitting anything to a film festival before, but our new album has some uh, videos that we submitted. And so that was really fun to get something new like that as well. And oh, and one of our best awards was that we were grand prize winner in the John Lennon songwriting competition. Nice. And I think that was one of the most prestigious ones that we felt that we won. Mm -hmm. And it does sound amazing as well, too. Before we talk about your latest release, you also have the spaceship that fell in my backyard. And did it really fall in our backyard or did you just happen to write about it? <laughs> <laughs> That's where the whole sort of story began, is that we had this song created that my brother and my mom, and my brother had come up with this wacky idea and we sort of created this whole story that my mom would play this alien who landed in my backyard and we would go on adventures and save the world together <laughs> so sort of it didn't actually happen but in our hearts it did <laughs> <laughs> and i think one's about to hit my yard as well too i might put a stop to that so <laughs> And, and of course, you know, we'll get to, um, you know, the thing about with your latest album, I Had a Dream, Songs of an Immigrant, and you guys, um, you know, had some great praise for that. And um, tell us more about that album and uh, how'd you guys um, first get started on it? Well, my grandmother uh, always wrote poetry. She escaped from Russia during the Bolshevik Revolution. And so English wasn't her first language, but she wrote some poems in Yiddish and some in English, and she used to read them to us when we would go visit her when I was young. And um, then one day we went and we found out that she had burnt her book of poetry because she had uh, read them to another resident in her building and they had said that they weren't good. And we were horrified by that because they were all about the history that she had lived through in her life. And so we asked her to please try and remember as many as she could and she remembered about 12 of them. And so um, we, I set a few of them to music in, as a way to kind of keep her legacy going. And Amelia and I performed some of those as like a little set on some recitals. And then later I got the opportunity to have a sabbatical project and I chose to do an entire album of, of the majority of her uh, poems and they're kind of in chronicle, chronological order of her life. So they tell a whole story. We just found out today that it's going to be admitted as an, like part of an exhibit in Israel and they're in a museum there. Um, and so that's like really exciting for us that her legacy will live on there in the museum. You know. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. And Amelia, you can go ahead and uh, contribute on your thoughts on the album as well too. And um, you know, what inspired you and some of the background and uh, your involvement with it. Sure, we, this has definitely been the most 
amazing family family project we've done in my opinion because it really encompasses so many diff- we got to write my great grandmother's poetry and my mom wrote such beautiful music to it and then I got the opportunity to perform it and so it spans over a few generations and I thought that it's, it's sort of my favorite part to talk about is how my mom would just wake up with these oh I know what the melody is gonna be to this other (laughs) poem and she would call me and say I have the new song and it was magical she came up with the the most perfect melodies for those poems and I just was it was it's such an honor to perform them and to get to really fulfill my great grandmother's dream that she always had through us and hopefully you know she's smiling down on us seeing all these things that we're getting to try and accomplish for her mm-hmm. and and of course out of the uh songs on poetry as well too what are some of the uh poems that um you know stood out for you guys especially some of the themes to it my favorite one is mushrooms because when my grandma was just eight years old they were very poor and they didn't have enough food so her mother sent her out into the forest to collect berries and mushrooms and they lived on, you know, that was a part of their sustenance. And so she had a poem about that. So that's the first poem in the cycle. And that just, the her the imagery of that poem really affected me and made me want to, that was the first one I put to music. Okay. And then Amelia, and Amelia, how about you, which uh, one of the poems, um, you know, stood, stood out for you and uh, what, what could you, um, you know, it's yeah. The story. Yeah. My, um, fave, I guess it'd be my favorite poem is my darling. It's very sad. And it talks about her whole life that she spent with my great grandfather and their relationship. And then when he passed away, she talks about it and, I really, it made me think a lot about my grandparents when my grandfather passed away. And I, I just, um, it really made it just, and it gets to everybody every time we perform it, there's some way that you can find a connection to this song and it's hard to perform it every time. So I hesitate to even say it's my favorite because it's very sad, but I really think that the emotion of it carries through beautifully. Mm-hmm. And, and it sounds like too that it just goes from like you know how it all began up until um you know, you know up to um the the end as well too and uh what yeah. what can the um what can the listeners um you know get you know you know get get from the um the album as well it's sort of you know there are some really cute short poems that talk about happy things and there are some very intense ones like my darling and there's one uh, that my mom discovered her graduation card from her grandmother that she turned into a song and so you can really expect a collage of different types of emotions and yeah like and it's in chronological order so it starts from the earliest point of her life that we have a poem from until and it ends with a poem why did I come why am I here to look around and disappear Mm -hmm. and and of course you know also says too that uh she also she also wrote about the daring escape during the Bolshevik revolution and um I mean that had to be quite daring I mean nowadays it's almost like difficult to do but that took a lot to uh to escape during the revolution yeah she was only 16 and she brought she had to go by herself starting when she was 13 to get all these papers, um, just travel all by herself to go get them, bring them back and get them permission to leave. Um, so she was in charge of her mom and her younger brother when they went. I mean, it, this political situation right now in Russia just mirrors what my grandma's story so much. I feel like it's so relevant to our, to uh, what, our project was um, the same thing that was happening to my grandma is happening again now. So, um, and I'm hopeful that the album points out just how how much an immigrant values becoming a citizen here and having freedom to do, you know, to, um, to live their life as they want to. 
and uh, all the things they have to go to just to get to that place, you know. Mm. And that is very interesting. Where can we find your uh, album, all your works at? Oh, you can, you know, buy it on Amazon. Um, I mean, on Spotify, Apple Music. Yeah. Stream Anywhere you think you can find an album, <laughs> chances are it's there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, we will certainly do so. And what's coming up for the wonderful duo of uh, Ruth Weber and Mili Lopez Giannis? We'll find out in just one minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia of Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with the multi talent duo of Ruth Weber and Emilia Lopez Giannis after this timeout. We're back with the amazing duo from San Diego, Ruth Weber and Mili Lopez Yanez here on the Mike Wagner Show. We talk about the album, I Had a Dream, Songs of an Immigrant, and also their other works as well, too, you can also find. And um, there was also something I forgot to mention, uh, Emilia, that you also were a featured soloist on um, UNESCO World Peace. You had Dan Aykroyd and Alan White. And I realized it's like, we've got to talk about that one since we talked about uh, what's <laughs> happened in the world. I totally forgot all about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's been a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that was an amazing opportunity. Again, my mom was also had one of her choirs featured on that out or on that album. Um, it was just it was a wonderful collection of different songs with uh, also spoken word. I mean, featuring a lot of amazing people, and I felt very humbled to be on it with those amazing people. <laughs> and and who would you say your favorite performer was? Who you worked with? Well, I kind of love Dan Aykroyd. So I just hearing his <laughs> hearing his voice was uh, on the same project that I was on was like, no way. I mean, I've known him since I was a child. Oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> it, it makes you wonder, where's Bill Murray in this whole thing? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh, my gosh. That's so amazing. And, of course, you know, you know, besides uh, I Had a Dream and uh, songs, of, songs of an Immigrant, uh, what else do you have coming up uh, for us in 2022 and beyond, guys? We, we just yesterday about completed this new single. You mentioned Mike Greenlee. So I wrote a piece with Mike Greenlee that hopefully will come out in the next few weeks or so um, that I think is a really beautiful single that's kind of, uh, it's very sad also. It's in, um, memorializes the life of his partner and um, uh, Amelia was the singer on that single as well. So I, I'm looking forward to people getting a chance to hear that. Mm -hmm. And we're certainly looking forward to as well, too. And who do you consider biggest influences in your careers? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I mean, it doesn't hurt that I have a mom who is so inspirational. So definitely my mother. And um, I think lots of teachers for me, just who have really made an imprint on my, not just my performing aspirations, but also just the way that they carry themselves through life as musicians. I think, you know, it's hard to, to be a musician. And so getting to know inspirational musicians is really nice. And, mm -hmm. and then how about you, Ruth? Who do you consider biggest influence in your career? I can't pinpoint one right now, but I tend to try to model myself after different women artists. Um, I know that it's a little, that you don't see as many women producers or conductors as men. And so for us to put out an album, that's just my daughter and I that are, you know, it's a women's album. I feel proud about that, that we're a mother daughter duo and, and um, want to, and I feel glad that we can be we can produce something at, that we can be proud of and also that I can be like I have the opportunity to conduct an all men's choir and I am the only one woman <laughs> I hope that that sets a good example for other people too for other women you know and of course if you have all these awards too like billboard charting and everything that has to be one heck of an accomplishment especially in San Diego 
Yeah, they were pretty excited when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy for you guys. And what's the best advice you guys can give to anybody at this point? For me, it's like, don't give up because, you know, I, the best thing started happening to me later in life. You know, Amelia is already teaching college. And, and so I get to not only see what my kids have achieved, but I finally, you know, I, I was hesitant to have kids because I thought it would stop my career, but actually my career includes my kids. So I wouldn't be doing all the things that I was doing without them. So never, never give up your dreams. Sometimes they come later than you think they will. That's a very good point. And I like that. And uh, Emilia, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? I think to not stay within the box that people feel the need to put you into. Um, you know, I mean, as a musician, you can really span multiple genres or, um, you know, you don't have to say what they think a typical classical musician needs to do or a typical pop musician. You can just do whatever makes you happy and people will love it if you're having a good time. I like that. Thinking out of the box. That is really good advice. I'll tell that to my kids. So once again, <laughs> Ruth Weber and Mili Lopezianas of um, the album, I Had a Dream, Songs of an Immigrant of Mike Wagner Show. Guys, very big thank you for your time. You guys have been totally terrific. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you guys back. Once again, tell us about your upcoming project. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your works? Thank you, first of all, for having us. It's yes, been thank you time. so much. You can find us um, at ruthandamelia.com. You can also find us at our own respective websites. Mine is amelialopezyanas.com. I think yours is ruthmakesmusic.com. Yes, Ruth makes music. Um, And you can find this album anywhere that albums stream, Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, um, anything you can think of, just you can type in Ruth and Amelia, and you'll also find our kids' albums under Ruth and Amelia as well. We certainly will do so. Once again, guys, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date, keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. We wish you all the best and looking forward to having you again soon. You've got a great future ahead of you. Thank you so thank much. You so much. It was great to get to know you a little bit. <laughs>